To be honest, I never really went to this first convention. I just I just happened to own the t-shirt. Hey guys, David here with a brand new review, and this time, obviously, if you have not guessed it already, we're going to be taking a look at Star Trek Into Darkness, the follow-up to the 2009 reboot by J.J. Abrams. And when I say reboot, I mean reboot. This movie does not let you forget that this is a rebooted timeline and a rebooted franchise. Why? I'm not going to say. This is a spoiler-free review, so feel free to watch and without any sort of concern for spoilers. Now, granted, I will be doing a spoiler discussion video. I still have yet to do my Iron Man 3 one. But hopefully I'll get that out of the way this weekend. But for the time being, enjoy my spoiler-free review of Star Trek Into Darkness. The movie takes place a few years after the first one in which Kirk and Spock and the rest of the crew are very, you know, they're very founded upon Starfleet. And they're pretty much captains of their own. Out of the blue, John Harrison, played by Benedict Cumberpatch, unleashes a world of hurt upon Starfleet. Kirk sets the Enterprise's sights on him and makes it his mission to bring him down to justice. Little does he know that that's barely the scheme of things. Now, right off the bat, this is one hell of a movie. It's beyond fun. I remember reading somewhere or hearing in a video that J.J. Abrams is mission with the original Star Trek was not just to make a movie for the fans but also make it a really good movie for people who love movies in general and you can easily tell that that's the same model he repeated to himself over and over while making this movie he made this movie to entertain people and to wink at the fans while doing it. This movie achieves that right on the spot and basically it's one huge thrill ride it does not let up there were some, I don't want to say pacing issues, but there's a moment where it lulls for a second, but not, and not in a bad way, but in a good way. And this is like during the first, during the last 15 minutes of the first half hour. After our initial prologue that is very exhilarating, it kind of slows down a little bit, but for the good of the story. The movie then takes twists and turns in places that you never thought it would go, but it works really well because this is, after all, a, a science fiction universe. So things that you expect you know, to be more grounded on reality, that's, that's just not going to happen. But it ties in really well. I'm not going to lie, about halfway through the movie, a, a huge plot device is unraveled that made me go, I'm really praying to God this does not go all over the place. This is, after all, co-written by one of the guys who did Prometheus, so that made me worry quite a bit. And I was fearing that it was going to go all over the place and just, you know, unravel itself and not, you know, clean itself tight. But fortunately it does. There were some things that maybe you want, might want to throw into question, but in the end there's nothing that's very, you know, that much of a gaping plot hole for you to be, you know, mind effed to, into thinking that, no, this is a very flawed movie. I cannot condone this as a good movie. Wrong. You actually can condone this as a great, not actually a great movie, and just over, oh, there's so much that I want to talk to you guys about, but it has to do a lot with spoilers. So this is a very spoiler-driven movie. So if you guys have not heard of anything, if you haven't, haven't even watched any of the trailers, that's actually one of the things that bugged me about at least the first trailer, either the first or second trailer, is that there's a shot towards the end of that trailer that made me go, that's going to happen. And it kind of does happen. So if you guys have not seen the trailers, it's best that you don't because then you'll go into this movie a whole lot more fresh than I did and you'll have an even greater experience because if this is a movie to have some form of experience with, it's this one. So since I must steer clear from spoilers, I guess I will go ahead and talk about the things that I can talk about. Everybody in the cast is great, you know, J.J. Abrams knows how to pick them. And besides not only the actors being great, the characters were great. There were certain characters that I thought were going to be written completely out of the movie and they're gonna, they were just going to be there for, for show, for a wink at the, at the fans or whatever. But no, they were able to utilize them very effectively and they were, you know, I'm not going to say convenient, but they were essential to the plot. Benedict Cumberpatch as John Harrison, probably one of the best villains of gener of cinema in this generation. Not ever. We still got, you know, we still got other villains that appeared in the Star Trek franchise itself. But Cumberpatch as John Harrison definitely ranks up to be one of them. A lot of the visual style that J.J. Abrams likes to incorporate into his movies is still here and it works wonderfully, especially with a science fiction movie like this. And yes, there are lens flares and I'm not going to lie, there's a point about maybe 45 in minutes into the movie where I was like, okay, there's no need for a lens flare, like right now. But much like the 3D in this movie, and yes, this movie, I did see this movie in 3D, it kind of wears off after a while and you kind of go, okay, you know, you adapt into it and you don't almost notice that it's there. The pacing was great, the characters and their actors were great, the directing was great, everything was very, very up to par with what you would expect from a sequel. With the story being as tight as it could have possibly been, with many twists and turns, one in particular that left my jaw dropped to the floor, to the point where even my friends were able to hear me gasp. Is it indeed better than the first? 
I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, but not by leaps and bounds because that's actually one of the few complaints that I have to, of, about this movie is that the movie's called Star Trek Into Darkness. You generally think that they're gonna have, they're gonna strike a darker tone. There were some darker elements, but it wasn't overall a darker movie than the first one. Whereas, you know, like, say for example, let's jump back to the classic example, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, it was very much darker and much, not only in terms of its story, but also in terms of, like, the bleak cinematography. It looked very, you know, dark and grim compared to the first movie. Here, you know, the cinematography and overall the tone of the movie is very much replicated from that of the first movie. To the point where I don't want to say which portion of the movie it is, but let's just say that there's a portion from the first movie that was literally almost frame by frame the exact same sequence in this film. The whole entire movie was going great, but it was that portion that kind of took me out of the movie a little bit because it was literally almost shot for shot this portion of the first movie. But by technical standards, the movie did in fact exceed over its predecessor and it's a very fun movie. It's one of the movies that you generally go to the theater to watch and to experience. I give Star Trek Into Darkness a 9.4 out of 10, which is an A. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more reviews. Follow me on Twitter at DarkSpiderDavid. I'm actually gonna put my name here so that people can look at it. And uh, again, I thank you guys for watching. Take care.